We're having a different conversation now. It's a World Maritime Week this week as we speak. And joining me now is the PS for Maritime. That's Miss Nancy Karigitu. Thank you so much for making time for us and joining us again. It's good to see you one more time. Thank what, you very much. How, what is the importance of this week? How significant is it for the common one in who's just tuned in now wondering what is going on? All right. Uh, today, the, the 24th of September is a very special day not just for us Kenyans, but for the whole world. The day goes under the title World Maritime Day. And it's a day uh, set aside by the United Nations and celebrated by the whole world. And it's really set aside to place focus, to showcase how important the maritime sector is to the society we live in today. Now, many of us do not uh, know or do not pay heed or are not even aware of how important the maritime sector is to our everyday life. But if you look around, we'll see that it's all about shipping because uh, the, the oceans, the waters provide economic highways uh, for trade. Now, what am I saying? Trade means that not every, or rather the reality of trade is that no single country is self-sufficient. And if we say that we consume only what we produce as a country, then of course we would have shortages uh, every day. In fact, statistics show that only 24% of countries or, or trade in the world is carried on between two countries with a common border. The rest of the trade is across many borders, international. And the only way that it's able to be achieved is because we use shipping. It is the ships that transport uh, the things we do every day. But then the day has been set aside because shipping does it works very, work very quietly but efficiently, works day and night, never pausing, never stopping in order to ensure that we live the lives we, we have today. So if you look around you, like now in the place I am in, the office I'm in, I'm using a computer that has been a, uh, impacted on by shipping. I'm sitting on a chair that at some time in its production, either it's raw materials, components, uh, in terms of uh, finished product, was affected by shipping. Yeah. The clothes on our back, everything has been touched by shipping, either in the form of raw materials or in the form of uh, the final product. And that's why the, the significance of this day is so important because the world takes a pause and looks at the importance of shipping. Uh, today, the theme, or rather the theme for this day today is sustainable shipping for a sustainable planet, which means therefore that we have to put the measures that ensure that uh, shipping remains sustainable to us because it's the only way the planet or the world we live in continues to improve and also becomes sustainable. And it's also a day to focus on the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals and what countries are doing, even us as Kenya, what we are doing to assure the attainment uh, of those Sustainable Development Goals. I and hope I've been able to explain simply. Yeah, and what are we supposed to be doing to ensure that it is sustainable in the long run? Because this is a, a very important venture, like you're mentioning here in the country. What efforts are we putting in place to ensure it is sustainable in the long run? Now, for the maritime sector to function properly and be sustainable, like you say, remain sustainable, a lot of measures need to be put in place. Uh, it's, it's different players, even in the government, private sector, everybody coming together and doing their bits to ensure that the, the sector remains sustainable. So one of the first things that we've done is mainstreamed the maritime sector, the maritime industry, uh, to be able to, uh, you know, to incorporate it in our national development goals so that whatever we are speaking at, whatever development facet we are looking at, then it has a component of maritime. So one of the first things we did is uh, incorporate the, the maritime sector within Vision 2030, our blueprint as a country for national development. And we did that by incorporating the sector as the eighth sector under the economic pillar that is expected to ensure 10% GDP growth for Kenya. And there are many, many programs that we are undertaking uh, to ensure that the sector plays, plays its rightful role. Yeah. Most important and what we are celebrating this year and what we are focusing on is capacity building. 
that's targeting the people, the players in the sector. You can't develop the maritime sector nationally or anywhere all over the world without the specific skills that are needed for people to play their rightful role. And in this, we are targeting the, the young people. Yeah. If you recall, November 2018, His Excellency the President uh, launched a number of projects, including the Kenya Coast Guard, to ensure that for sustainability, the maritime domain, the maritime domain which uh, encompasses our waters, both in the ocean and inland waters, remains safe and secure uh, for investment and for the different economic activities that we need to play. So he incorporated, or rather he launched the Kenya Coast Guard Service in order to ensure that maritime law enforcement has got a specific player who is there day and night and who is ensuring that investments are safe and the players uh, and the area is ready and ripe uh, for investment. Yeah. He also launched the Bandari Maritime Academy, which is um, meant to be the center of excellence for maritime training and skills development. This is targeting the youth of this country. As you remember, we are told and we've, remind, we've been reminded every time that we have a youth bulge in, in the sense that we have got more youth than some of us older people. And therefore, we have to make them part of this journey. Now, the difference between maritime sector skills development is because we are entering into an area that is highly regulated under the United Nations uh, through its specialized uh, agency known as the International Maritime Organization. Why? Because the human element in shipping or in the sector is the most important because if you look at sustainability in terms of uh, preventing accidents, making sure that uh, the activities are carried out in a safe manner, then it is the people that you must target. And therefore, the IMO came up with international standards that are enforced globally in terms of developing the cadre that yeah. are supposed to work in this sector. Then statistics tell us that yeah. uh, we are currently facing or getting into almost a crisis stage in the, fa in, the, in the fact that we need more people to be trained and to qualify, to be certificated, to work in the sector. Uh, because whatever certificate you get in Bandari Maritime Academy must be, de must be attained in such a way that it's as good as the certificate attained in the UK, attained in Singapore or wherever else. Yeah. That's what ensures the, the same level of understanding and that's an issue of sustainability because then the ship owner can target to get his crew from anywhere in the world and they will all perform in the same manner. Yeah. Now statistics tell us that uh, the cadres we need, uh, there's a shortage of 70,000 officers. These are the top layer or the top level uh, of certificated people, very highly yeah. trained, work in the sector. We've got a shortage of 450,000 ratings. Ratings are the people who assist the officers to run the ships. And therefore, we've got a very good opportunity as Kenya, which we have identified, to be able to send as many of our young people into the sea. Now, how are we doing this? We are targeting uh, to train from the ratings up to the officers. When we talk of officers, we are talking of the people we train to get uh, degrees, people who go from Form 4 into straight into the university. And we're talking of Nairobi University, we're talking of Jomo Kenyatta University, of Agriculture and Technology, Moi University, yeah. those institutions. But then we are also targeting our TVET institutions to be able to raise the ratings yeah. that then can they can then go and compete for jobs with other players in the sector. PS, allow me to now, interject on this for a bit, yeah, because I'm, I'm very interested in what you just said. So with the 70,000 officers gap and 450,000 ratings, you know that's about 520,000 jobs that are open right now as we speak, and the youth are struggling to get jobs. How come this is not something they're aware of if there's that many jobs available in the maritime sector right now? Okay, I, I think the industry, like, and that's, uh, it's not a problem of Kenya alone, and that's the reason why the United Nations uh, set aside this day, in order to bring awareness. Uh, because like I said, it's a sector that works very quietly, efficiently, day and night, uh, without stopping, but very little is understood about it. And one of the things that we did is to open up the sector, and we are trying as much as possible 
uh, to be able to let our youth know of the jobs that are in the sector and also the skills they need and also the personal characters that the sector needs to be able to, for, for one to be able to succeed. And maybe we've not done our job to the maximum in order to sensitize as many youth, but it's an ongoing job. Last week, and, and if you listen to the community uh, radios this week going forward, you will hear me talking about the blue economy and talking to the youth and telling them what they need to, to do, the, the skills they need to look for, the character traits that they need to uh, to cultivate inside of themselves, and particularly the, the subjects that are needed for them to be able to get the jobs in this sector. But what I was trying to say is also that we, we are also telling them that it's not just about uh, going to the university, because like you had, we've got the rating jobs, and those ones don't need a degree. The other thing I need to mention is that this is a very interesting sector, because if you look at job exports, you won't find another sector that the country is able to export youth from the low-skilled, medium-skilled, and the highest-skilled uh, personnel. Because people, I mean, youth from the TVET institutions who've done technical subjects will be able then, combining with the specialized training at Bandari Maritime Academy, be able to get the right certificate, certificate that will then enable to get enable them to get a foothold into the maritime sector. The next interesting thing is that once you get your foot inside the sector, nothing prevents you using your initiative, hard work, and more training to be able even to reach at the top. So nothing prevents the, the person who gets in as a rating to be able to reach officer level. And that makes the sector very interesting because then you'll be playing with international uh, team players, not just Kenyans. All right. But one of the things that we, uh, you know, I keep emphasizing, and sometimes I've been misunderstood, is that, uh, like I said, there are certain traits that you need to e explore as a youth. One of them is being is getting communication skills. Yeah. Being able to speak so that understood by the person you are you are addressing yourself to. But even then, again being able to understand what you're being told. Because if, if you are on a ship and you cannot take instructions properly, it affects the safety and then sustainability. So communication skills are very, very important to yeah. explain yourself and also to understand what you're being told. Okay. Most important, and this is very, very uh, a very serious issue and the youth need to understand, is to cultivate English speaking skills. English is the global language of the maritime sector. Okay. And that's that's not me speaking, it's through the UN, through the IMO. If you go to Mombasa today and you find a ship that has been, that has been built in a Russian shipyard, yeah. the manuals may have been originally in Russian, but there must be a translation in the English mm -hmm. language. And that's the things that uh, the regulator, Kenya Maritime Authority, when they bought ships for inspection, they'll be looking for. So unless the youth are able to cultivate English speaking skills, and I mean proper English speaking skills, yeah. not Sheng, <laughs> and not WhatsApp emojis, <laughs> those will not apply. And um, it becomes a very critical issue because the government has started projects to bring the youth into jobs. And from last year, I've been involved in foreign shipping lines uh, interviewing and recruiting ships, I, I mean, uh, crew from Mombasa. And yeah. there is nothing as sad as seeing a student with the right skills, with the right certificates, but then when they are put to the English test, which is done through the digital platform, then you find them failing, and it may, really makes me sad. So I'm urging our young people, let's embrace and let's go back to our reading culture. We used to have it. Okay. Reading books so that you know, your mind internalizes yeah. proper English. Let's practice speaking and writing English properly and not taking, sh you know, shortcuts. Yeah. I hear students or, or young people nowadays, you know, it's very, you know, stylish to say, my bad. The first time it was told to me, I didn't understand what that <laughs> meant. Uh, or using <laughs> the, the word you are, you know, when you actually mean to say you are, you know, yeah. you are going. You, so I wish we could now tell our young people that the time is right because 
no matter how long, how, how, how good certificates we have, we, we are not able to express ourselves, ourselves in English, then it becomes a barrier. Okay. We've got jobs also in the soft skills. Yeah. Like in hospitality. Uh, the government has been very careful to be able to cultivate relationships with partners who will be able to give us a platform uh, yeah. to be able to people of all kinds of training and skills. And as you know, Kenya is a world guru, or you know, we've cut our niche in hospitality. Yeah. And being able to send some of these people into the uh, maritime sector through this platform has been very, very good. Okay. Uh, in the Last one year, we were able to send 500 of them. Yeah. May look very small as a number, but okay. the thing is, who knew that Kenyans can work and deliver in this sector? And therefore, getting that opportunity to be able to showcase the Kenyan youth as a hardworking, disciplined, you know, yes. able to communicate and able to sell themselves has been a very, very good platform. Okay. Thank and you, Madam P.S. Yes, we, we, we've really run out of time here, but I'm sure we'll keep on talking about this and ensure that the youth listen, because what, I've, what I'm very interested in is that there's more than 520,000 jobs up for grabs, and the youth yes. keep complaining about jobs. I'm sure we'll have you again on to have this conversation with us much more in-depth. Nancy Karigitu, she's the Principal Secretary of Shipping and Maritime Affairs right here in the country. Of course, there's many other issues that you have to go through as a youth to ensure that you get a job in the maritime sector, but there are opportunities there.